Namaste and welcome back to the channel. My dear friends, today I'm going to be talking about a topic which has been requested a lot by all of you, which is what are web applications and how do we build them? My friends, Google, Flipkart, Ola, Amazon, Swiggy, Uber, Zomato. Now all these applications, if you ask me what is common between them, what is common is all of them require an active internet connection for you to be using them. Well, such applications which require an internet connection to be used is what in a very, very simplistic manner can be defined as a web application. Now, the story does not end there. Let us dive deeper and understand what really a web application is. Please understand, web applications are such applications or software programs which are stored in ridiculously powerful, fast computers called as server computers. As you can see, they are huge computers with insane processing power, storage capacity, RAM, hard disk, etc. Right? And on the other end, and on the other end, we have the user who wants to use these web applications, who's either using a laptop or a tablet, or even in certain instances, their mobile phones. Now the question is, how can a user from his computer access the web application present within a server? Well, the answer to this, my friends, is one word called as HTTP, or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. What does this really mean? Please understand, what really happens is, you have your client computer or the user's computer, and you have the server, and definitely, as I previously told you, you require an active internet connection. The user goes and installs a software called as a browser in his computer. Now, different, different, uh, you know, great software companies have created their own browser softwares, such as Google has created Chrome browser, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft has created Internet Explorer which is now rebranded and called as Edge and of course Apple has Safari. Now what really happens is all of these browsers gives you a bar on top of it called as the URL bar. You go to the URL bar and you tell HTTP indicating that you want to now connect to the server using a protocol called as HTTP followed by the server that you want to connect to by saying www. let us assume facebook.com like this now i would love to deep dive and speak about http protocol maybe i'll make a separate video on that but for now please understand what really happens when you press enter is that this particular url is now via the internet sent to something called as dns or the domain name server now this domain name server converts the URL which you have given into an IP address. Now why is this important? Please understand, what you call as an internet is a collection of billions of computers. Each computer has a unique identification number called as the IP address. Now based on the, uh, on the URL that you have given and the IP address it got matched to, automatically the internet is going to take the request from the browser and forward it to that computer to which the IP address matches. Now what happens is that computer receives your request, which is nothing but your server, processes the request and sends back a response. This response finds its way through the internet back to the client and the browser's only duty is to show you the output which it is being received and this in a very short way is a very pictorial or a diagrammatical representation of how the HTTP protocol works right so I hope it is clear to you how a web application works it's very simple the user just requires a browser and an internet connection to access an application present in a computer somewhere else in the world called as a server Having heard all of this, I'm sure you are extremely curious about knowing how can you start your journey in developing web applications. My friend, it's very simple. A web application can be divided into three layers, front-end, back-end and database. Now, when we speak about front-end, front-end is something which a user can see and interact with. Let me give you an example. Let me take you to Amazon. As you can see, when you look at the Amazon website, there is something that you and me can see. There is something that you and me can interact with. This is only called as a front-end. Now, in order to create a front-end, you'll have to learn certain front-end technologies, primarily HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap to begin with. And of course, certain advanced 
topics such as frameworks such as either an angular or a react js etc right but however these are things which you must and should know knowing this you can start developing beautiful front ends right not only that now if you take the example of amazon you know amazon sells mobile phones laptops it sells clothes it sells groceries it sells furniture now can you imagine how much of data amazon is going to have about all its products that is listed on its website and amazon is a global company naturally all this has to be stored somewhere storage of information or data does not happen on the front end my dear friends it happens in a unique layer or in a separate layer of a web application called as the database and it is inside this which all the data is stored so naturally one has to know about databases as well now when it comes to databases you will have to learn a language using which you can interact with the database called as the structured querying language of sql and some kind of a database management software such as a uh, mysql or an oracle right and there are different options as well anyways just front end and back end is not enough because as you can see if i take it to amazon there are different functionalities amazon provides right for example i can search for a particular brand of mobile i can sort it based on you know a popularity based on uh, price from high to low low to high so all these my friends are computational activities right wherein searching sorting you know all this is computational activities now if you want computations to be performed if you want logical operations to be performed front end cannot do it database cannot do it you need a programming language for it and that is where the back end comes into the picture in the back end there are different programming languages like this each of the programming languages have frameworks like this you can choose any language but as a fresher i would personally suggest you either to go with java or python java being the first preference and python being the second because highest number of job openings and opportunities are in these two languages right so learn a language learn its frameworks and then you can start coding the back end so this in a very simple way if i have to show us a chart front end back end database these are the technologies which you must learn to begin your journey in developing web applications my friends i hope you found this video super useful if you did do like share and subscribe and i would love to hear about your thoughts in the comment section and also tell me what are the kind of videos you would like to see in the future and i will definitely work on all of this thank you so much for listening and i will see you in the next video Thank you.